on my fifth birthday i remember getting my first barbie doll it had all those cute little accessories with it and even some fake makeup items as a child i had i had never been fond of playing with dolls preferring instead jigsaw puzzles and toy cars i had this huge bag filled with little ferraris and mercedes that i would race along our dining table i was always left deeply confused when all my relatives and friends gifted me dolls on my birthdays which just gathered dust on my shelves until i regifted them gender toys are fundamentally a way to train children for their future roles i am deeply grateful to my parents that they took the decision to not follow gender norms and give me the toys that i liked to play with unfortunately parents are almost forced to choose gender toys because of marketing strategies like colors and choice of words on boxes of toys not only that children are also unconsciously targeted to favor the toys preselected for their gender jean piaget's theory says that children are not passively socialized and they have the ability to respond to situations by acting on their behavior they construct their own understanding of the world but the prevalence of gender norms means that this understanding will be severely prejudiced and constrained Harry Weber's theory of market segmentation says that dividing consumers into smaller groups is good for business. Companies worked out that by segmenting the market into narrower demographic groups, they could sell more versions of the same toy. A relevant example is that of the Lego brand. Until recently, Lego used to sell non-gendered toys and its advertisements showed boys and girls playing together with the same Legos. But The market segmentation theory passed by and a new concept of Legos emerged. Lego Friends. Its target audience was purely little girls. What links the different Lego worlds together is the color system which is used in every world. There is a domination of pink and colors traditionally associated with girls. Lego Friends appeared in 2011 when Lego had a crisis. According to one of the market studies, 90% of their consumers were boys. The brand had to figure out a way to reach a feminine public. So, the company carefully studied differences between how boys and girls play. They found that when boys build a construction set, they prefer to play with the finished product on the outside. When girls build construction sets, they tend to play on the inside. Lego friends tripled the number of girls playing with Legos after basing their analysis from a social logical point of view. They created Lego boxes in which the girls can not only build the setting but can also invent stories for the mini figures. This statement is really relevant to the stereotypes into which children are confined. Boys are meant for the outside and girls are meant for the inside. Boys are more skillful at construction whereas girls are confined to keeping the inside in order. It confirms the discrepancy that is made between boys and girls and implicitly makes them integrate that there exists a distribution of tasks and labor between the two genders. It systematically changes their perspective of what is right for their future and what is wrong. Another relevant example is the attribution of the toy in McDonald's Happy Meals. The cashier would almost automatically put in a girl toy if you are with a little girl and a boy toy if there's a little boy next to you. There is not an ungendered alternative to these toys. Therefore, it is difficult for girls to choose a toy which is explicitly not belonging in her gender category. A boy toy is for boys, not girls, since it is said so. Even the denomination of the toy is gendered and children have no option but to shape themselves into the gender category they have been taught they belong to. An alternative to gender is not even thinkable since their construction of the world depends on the simulations of the knowledge they are exposed to. Like all humans, children are afraid of being rejected. A feeling of shame can appear if a child does not look for toys in the right toy category in a toy department in a shopping center gender toys can imply and amplify stereotypes 
associated with boys and girls boys cannot express their feelings and girls cannot climb trees this sends the message that as an adult too he is not supposed to do the work associated with a woman clear distinctions are made between the societal expectations of boys and girls and their unique personalities are as a result neglected and ignored the production and reproduction of sexist categories may make children interiorize and reproduce them as teenagers and grown ups the theory of sexuality defended by Catherine McKinnon says that dominance and submission define gender because of sexual relationships sexuality is constructed by sexual dominance of men and is reproduced since the playground age boys are bombarded with words like battle action power and girls are fed the messages of baby love perfect boys have no choice but to be brave and girls are attributed the nurturing task inverting these roles would appear abnormal which literally means out of the norm by encouraging children to fit into gender categories and threatening them with the risk of rejection if they do not conform we feed the renewal of an unequal society campaigners fighting for gender neutrality right now seem to be more and more understood a striking example appeared in the disney world which in fact is considered as one of the most sexist fairs of childhood by many feminists. In the movie Frozen, Princess Elsa inherits her kingdom when her parents die, while well, she is still very young. The fact that she will never require nor need the help of any man to rule and will never express the feeling of getting married or finding the love of her life is revolutionary. This movie is an important example for little girls. because it makes them understand that they can be leaders on their own too and that this status is not reserved for men toys are not just toys they are the framework for a child's growth and the window to learning what is expected of them as adults it is the first step in their vision of the world around them and their place in if toys remain gendered girls will remain eternal princesses in distress that only men can rescue so i implore you i implore you that the next time you go to buy a toy for your sons and daughters nieces and nephews and grandchildren look for non gender toys or toys that you know the child enjoys teach them that the world is not pink and blue and that they do not need to change themselves to fit into society tell them that they are good enough just the way they are Thank you so much.